Hello, everyone. My name is Tom Terzin, and I'm a biology professor um, who would like to talk to you about um, some interesting things today. Uh, so several days ago, uh, I stumbled upon one interesting recipe for some appetizer, and uh, it's caviar pie. So I'll show you how it looks. I hope it will not fall from the from the dish. And it's so good that a good part is gone already, but you, you can imagine there were uh, there were concentric circles all the way. And the caviar is basically fish eggs. So you need to use several different kinds of fish eggs. And uh, it's not my original recipe, so you'll probably be disappointed I will not share uh, with you all the details. But it's called dish, and uh, you put some layers uh, of food, and then on the top of it, uh, you can design these circles, concentric circles of uh, fish eggs or caviar. And since different species uh, have different color of these eggs, you can make these nice concentric patterns. And since I study color patterns, in nature, I thought that would be the good intro uh, to actually talk about uh, eye patterns in butterflies and some other insects. So uh, basically, uh, insect eyes are compound and they resemble a little bit these uh, eggs. There's so many of them. So inside these big uh, insect eggs, uh, big, big insect eyes, there are many separate eyes that we call ocelli, but today we're not going to talk about these. We are going to talk about uh, color patterns in the form of eyes, or they resemble eyes on the wings of insects, particularly <clears throat> butterflies. So butterflies have scales on their wings, and because of that, they're called lepidopterans or scaly wings in translation. And these tiny scales, when you catch a butterfly, the, that's the powder that remains on, on your fingers. And the organization of that powder or scales on the wings is uh, very precise. So there are precise rows of the scales and scales are always monochromatic. So they have only, only one color. And that color can be pigment based in many cases, but also can be structural color. So some scales can be metallic in, in many species, for example, in blue morpho butterflies, it's spectacular metallic color. But the, the way how scales are organized, uh, expressing different colors, each scale, actually can uh, produce compound image. So that pattern on the wings of butterflies is very complex image. And very often in many species of butterflies and moths, uh, you will find some concentric rings like this, uh, this pie that I made, concentric rings that resemble eyes. And because of that, they're, they're usually called uh, false eyes or eye patterns. And uh, for a long time, scientists did not know how that is organized, how that is made during the development of butterfly. Uh, although about the function of these false eyes, we, we suppose that they have uh, several potential functions. If they're big on the center of the wings, they usually, uh, we, we think that, uh, that their function is to scare predators. Because if you have false eyes, some image that looks like big eyes, then assumption is that you also have a big mouth and that, that you're predator, uh, so that uh, birds and some other uh, other animals that feed on butterflies and moths, they may, may get scared when they did, uh, when they see these big eyes, um, and particularly if eyes are hidden on the hind wings. So moths uh, they keep their wings roof-like, so front wings cover hind wings. And if they suddenly flush uh, and show these hind wings with, with huge eye patterns, that can be really scary for, for some birds and, and some other predators of insects. Uh, and uh, they, they, uh, they 
being surprised give butterflies and moths sufficient time to, to escape. Uh, another function could be actually if those eye patterns are small, uh, their function can be to actually deter attack because uh, predators are smart. They know where vital organs are. So, so they usually attack head and thorax, part of body which is important for locomotion and, and control and sensors. But uh, in this case, uh, if on the edges of wings, there's small eye patterns, they're not scary, but they still look like eye patterns so that predator <clears throat> may think that there is head. So they will go for, for the head in wrong place. And if they just uh, bite the edge of wing, uh, butterfly or moth still can escape. So that would be another function. And some people suppose that specific uh, color patterns, including eye patterns in some species, uh, uh, are used for species recognition. But the explanation of function is one thing. Another thing is uh, actually how these color patterns that form eyes or concentric circles, how they develop. And for that, you need a bunch of genes uh, with precise functions. And, you know, when I made this pie, I used a little teaspoon and then added uh, color by color, small, uh, small pieces or small amounts of fish eggs on the edge, making uh, the, the, the most outer circle. And then the next circle and the next, the next, and finally the center. So I made them one by one and I used intelligence in that process. I'm not sure how sufficiently, but still I used intelligence and had plan how to make that pattern. So you cannot make pattern, a uh, particularly complex pattern uh, without some sort of plan. And uh, what about butterfly wings? So how these patterns are formed? Uh, well, it's completely different way. So why, why I, I was making circle by circle, uh, wings of butterflies express their patterns simultaneously. So entire surface will gradually express patterns, not necessarily all pigments at the same time. So there can be delay in different pigments appearance, but the pattern itself is actually designed uh, at the same time. So how it works, where for many different uh, butterflies and moths can have uh, extremely complex patterns. And these patterns are species specific, so they will be inherited. Uh, and basically we recognize species based on their patterns. But so how that is repeated from generation to generation, obviously is genetically controlled. So there is genetic program, which for its, each species, butterflies and molds, forms these recognizable patterns. And then the eye pattern is just one part of total patterns on the wings, plus there are four wings and two sides on both sides, particularly in butterflies. There are scales in moths, uh, uh, bottom side of the wing or, or ventral side, very often does not have patterns, but still there's some scales which look more hairy-like. Uh, how, however, uh, all butterflies do have patterns and these patterns tend to be different on front side and on the, on the bottom side of each wing. So basically there are four wings. These patterns are not identical. They're symmetrical on the left and right wing. So basically you have eight surfaces on the wings on which these designs are made and they have to be controlled genetically for each species. And there is over 20,000 species of butterflies and uh, almost uh, 200,000 uh, species of moths, so these of moths, but when you put all together Lepidopterans, so scaly wing insects, butterflies and moths, uh, there's about 2, uh, 200,000 known species and many species, particularly small moths, await description, particularly in tropical region. So maybe we're not even halfway uh, of describing all species. And then can you imagine all these species having uh, eight surfaces on the wings 
uh, with genetic programs, species specific genetic programs to make these patterns. It's truly amazing uh, why nature needs such diversity and particularly how that diversity is made. So uh, at the end of 20th century, uh, some scientists in the United States uh, actually discovered how development of eye patterns work. And we had some theoretical predictions how that might work. So there are some genes uh, and some chemicals, not necessarily genes, but some, some organic chemicals in the wings during development uh, then can, that can diffuse. And they, we call them morphogenes. And these chemicals uh, act based on their concentration. So if you can have the source of that morphogene on the surface of wing uh, and cells produce that chemical, chemical will diffuse and based on the concentrations through the process of diffusion will trigger activation of different biochemical pathways that will produce different pigments on different distance from the center, from the origin of that morphogene. And in that way, uh, similarly, like when, when you throw a pebble uh, in the pond, uh, there are concentric waves that go around. And these concentric waves in this case are different concentrations of morphogene. So on the high concentration, it will trigger one color. And then as you go from the center to, towards periphery of the, that uh, zone of influence of morphogene, lower, lower and lower concentrations and particular thresholds will activate different colors. So if we use again this uh, caviar pie, uh, to demonstrate that, this would be the center where morphogenes, mor morphogen would be secreted, and then it will uh, diffuse towards the edges, and on different concentration thresholds will activate uh, different, uh, different biochemical pathways that will synthesize different pigments uh, in, the, in the scales of, uh, of the wing resulting in something similar as I made. So while I was making circle by circle in different colors, the, the network that uh, determines the eye pattern in butterflies and moths is established uh, at the same time or simultaneously across entire wing. And then later on, it will trigger the deposition or formation of different, uh, different pigments. Now, uh, thousands of species of moths and hundreds of species of butterflies do have these uh, eye patterns and they're species specific, they're different. Uh, and this is the simplest situation. So when you have just concentric, concentric rings uh, that just go similar, like, like thickness is similar, uh, just different colors, uh, that is something that resembles target, like if you play darts or, or something like that. And it does resemble eye, we call it eye pattern, but it's not truly that similar to, to an eye. So when we say eye pattern, you can see I am uh, a mammal and or, or terrestrial vertebrate, and we have this kind of eyes as we do. Uh, with, uh, with the pupil in the center, so, so that pupil is dark colored because uh, light goes inside. But you can see also that glare, that, that light, uh, which uh, painters and artists, when, when, when they make uh, paintings of people, never forget. So if you forget that glare, eyes do not uh, look alive. Uh, but when you add that little, usually white, glare uh, in the pupil of an eye, uh, then it uh, looks more alive. And then around, you can see this, this uh, blue circle or iris. Uh, and then obviously white around. So uh, you can see that there's several, uh, several concentric circles, right? but they're not completely symmetrical because of that glare of light, which on the wet surface of vertebrate eyes is unavoidable if you have the source of 
of light. Now, insects do not, do not have this type of eyes. They have compound eyes, as I mentioned, with many tiny eyes, just to use this pie once, <laughs> once more. So basically, each tiny egg here, we can imagine like single uh, tiny eye of an insect. Uh, an entire structure would be one compound or complex eye. And then each tiny eye uh, contributes to the, to the big picture. But since insects have eyes made of many small eyes, you do not have that glare as you have on the uh, wet surface of vertebrate eyes. So as soon as you have that dark center of uh, false eyes on the wings of insects, and you have one white spot, which is usually asymmetrical, then you can be pretty sure that uh, uh, the structure really imitates or mimic eye and not just any eye, but vertebrate eye, which is wet and curved. And because of that has that glare. So in other words, those usually big eye patterns uh, indeed most likely uh, uh, resemble predator eyes because most predators of insects, if with the exception of spiders, maybe, uh, are vertebrates, lizards, small mammals, and birds. So the question is how that glare in the eye, false eye, is made, particularly because the, the surface of wing is flat. So it's not curved like our eyes. Uh, uh, and the, the, the problem here is that you cannot use that morphogen concept. Morphogen is easy to be used as the, you have the source of morphogen from the center and then different concentrations will trigger different patterns in concentric rings, but you need to have that uh, eye, which uh, uh, that white glare, which usually is not seen in many species, but in also in many species is seen in many species. I would say more species do have that asymmetrical eye pattern than symmetrical. Uh, and uh, the question is how that is organized. And of course, the ultimate question is how blind uh, natural processes can design the picture of vertebrate eye on the wings of, uh, of a butterfly or some other insect. Uh, programmed, the, the genetic program in these species to actually can produce the patterns that have meaning and we can recognize that meaning as false eyes on the wings. And not just once, not just twice, but many, many times. So the, the, the laws of probability cannot actually explain uh, the appearance of these eye patterns in many groups uh, of butterflies and moths that are not directly related, meaning if we accept the common origin as uh, theory of evolution, uh, evolution teaches, that means that many times uh, independently these eye patterns had to be uh, reinvented, which is not... Uh, so at the end, uh, I would like to show you diversity of uh, these various patterns. And um, so I, I'll, I'll make a, a little uh, PowerPoint presentation of different eye patterns so that you can see magnificence of nature. Thank you very much for your attention. Please subscribe to my channel if you did not already and spread the word. Mm -hmm.